Skip is currently running a Painter 2019 course at Digital Art Academy. I highly recommend taking a course with Skip and Digital Art Academy. They are super cost effective and you will learn a ton. With that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to you, Skip. So now I will be quiet, Skip. Take it away. <laughs> okay. You don't need to be quiet. You can keep talking while we're doing all this. Is my screen okay. showing now? Yes. Okay, good. All righty. So, well, um, what you're seeing is my workspace and the layout that I use, which is a little different from <clears throat> most people. I like to keep everything on the right hand side because that's I'm right handed and I, I want to I don't want to reach across the screen all the time. So I keep trying to work everything on the right. Now, occasionally I'll throw something on the left, like I'm going to put probably my mixer pad. Uh, I mean, my uh, color. Uh, panel up on that side, on the left side. But to get started, I use this uh, command panel here, the, uh, and I just click on New, and I'm going to open up a what I call a portrait tall watercolor, 700 by 1200 by 100 pixels per inch. Now, I rarely work over 100 pixels per inch, but, you know, I could. It's The reason I don't is because I rarely print. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I don't need to, to do that. Now, when I open up an image, I will uh, check and see. Let me get another brush that I'm going to be working with. Yeah. Um, yeah. While you're grabbing that brush, um, would you have a recommend, recommendation for them if they were to want to print at um, what size they might want to work with? Well, my experience has been that I can get by with 150 pixels per inch on the on printing, but I work mostly with watercolor, which is sort of soft. Right. Um, and if you want, you know, crisper setups, then you would probably want to go up in it. But what I would really recommend is not what I would tell you but what your printing people would tell you. If you're having it printed uh, by somebody, talk to them about what they want. And a lot of the print houses can increase the resolution without any problems and print, even if you're working at a lower resolution. But as I said, I hardly print. Okay, so, yeah. and I think you know my recommendation would be a, a minimum of 200 DPI. But Skip is right. It depends on what kind of paper you're printing, who's printing, and what they can do on their end. So um, we can follow up. I know we have some more information around that that I could probably forward to people. Okay, great. All right. So what I'm going to be using is this paper called Heavy Pastel. It's a custom paper that I made in my traditional style papers. Um, and I'm going to, I want to open up the paper panel so that you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, and I have it set at a very uh, small size at 25%. And then I, I vary uh, the sliders a bit. I'm, I'm going to make it kind of light because I don't want to have a lot of texture at this point. And then I'm going to double click my little, this is in a palette drawer, double click it to roll it up. And now I'm coming over to my custom toolbox. And in my custom toolbox, I have a paper overlay uh, script. And I will open up the uh, layers panel and you'll see that I'm on the canvas. And all I do is I click that and then it makes a paper overlay for me. And if I go to it, it makes it at about 80% um, opacity. But I found lately that I want to go down to about 25%. Um, and when I go down to 25%, see if I zoom in, you can still see the paper. But it's not nearly as strong as it was. So then I lock the paper so that I don't do anything to it, and we come back down to the canvas. Now, to, to start the demonstration today, I was telling Tanya that, that I've been playing a lot with pattern pens, and I, I really get a kick out of them. So 
I'm going to work with pattern pens, but I'm going to not work on the canvas. My recommendation is to always add a layer because there are things you can do on the canvas if you keep it clean. You can drop something to the canvas and then lift it or do things with it, all kind of stuff. And that we're in a digital world, so we want to keep all of that, uh, those opportunities open. If we just work on the canvas, you know, you're working in a traditional manner, but let's expand, go, go digital. So my recommendation is to start on a layer. Okay. Now I'm not going to go in and put a background in this one because we're not going to try and uh, finish this particular drawing. I just wanted to show you some of the fun ways to work with pattern pins before we get into a landscape. Now on my custom palette over here, I've got these are all patterns that I've created. Now they're patterns that are patterns with a mask. And when you create a pattern with a mask, you uh, it it uh, and you and you like use the pattern pin mask or really any of these, and you begin to paint with it. What you're going to get is the pattern, <laughs> and it's going to come out like a, a painted line. See, and so each one of these is a, a pattern like that. Okay, so it's like a brush stroke, and they can be very complex with lots of color. And most of the time, I'm making them with uh, watercolor. Um, like this one, you'll be able to tell is watercolor color looking. And and when you make all of these weird patterns or whatever, and you start to paint with them, it gets really fun. So what I'm going to do real quick here is just show you how you can take this form here and begin to paint with it. And of course, you're sitting there thinking, well, what, what in the world is this with all these dots and things? And and I don't care about all the dots and things. It's just a shape that we're developing here. And you should be able to sort of tell what I've begun to make with this um, this brush, you, you should be able to begin to see that I've got a, a bird here. Now, I just realized I've got him, he's about to fall over backwards, but that's okay. All right, so what do I wanna do with the bird? Well, I can then grab another pattern brush of some type, and let's say this bird is gonna be, um, he's, he's a red bird of some sort. Well, if I get another pattern, and this one is called Red Run, and I put over the top of it, look, ta da! Now, this particular brush, let me let me check something here. I'm going to open up my uh, glaze, uh, actually my um, glazing panel glazing and stroke attributes panel and I have my stroke attributes set so I want to take that off now that that's off you'll see the way the pattern mask actually works it would cover up what was already there so that's why I went and would want to go to use uh, stroke attributes and I might use gel or something and if you're working on the same layer then you're just coloring that area. See, sort of like that. And then I could grab um, another kind of color and bring it in. And maybe that's the way his head and neck would work. All right, so do you get the idea of what I'm doing here? It's like, um, you know, drawing stuff, um, with a sort of a free attitude, I guess, and, and creating with it. Um, if you wanted to, we could, we could get rid of this. Um, and I'll show you just real quickly. 
that we could do Get a, uh, yeah. What kind of tablet are you using right now? Um, I am actually using my old Intuos 5 Touch. Uh, I'm in Mississippi. My I have a Cintiq 24-inch uh, Touch, but it's back in Mississippi. So um, I'm using a tablet tablet, which I like. Yeah, I actually have um, one of the older tablets as well, in addition to newer ones, and I use them both, and they they work really well. Um, right when you started, when you first showed the overlay script, Paul right. was wondering, <laughs> I think he's kind of curious, how exactly does that work? Okay. I don't know um, if that's something that you show in your course or... I, I sometimes I talk, I mean, in my course, if anybody comes in the course and you see me doing something, which I would do that, I would give them the scripts for this so that they could do it themselves. But I will tell you how it's done in, uh, in the class. The, a script is, if you're familiar with actions in Photoshop, a script in Painter is the same thing as an action in Photoshop. It's just uh, you you create a, a, a you you record a series of commands, and so all I did was um, I uh, to to make that I would have gone up to select, and I would have auto select, and when you auto select, you have the option of auto selecting paper. And you would auto select the paper and that would give you a selection of paper that you can then fill with any kind of color. And that on that layer by itself, after it's been filled, then um, that's your, you know, your, your paper overlay. Does that answer the question, Paul? I'll give him a couple seconds to okay. respond back. Um, there are also some questions in regards of during your course. I know that it's an introduction to Painter 2019, but right. do you have any courses where you show how to make these kinds of patterns? Well, actually, yeah, these 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 pins and patterns are part of 2019 because we have new pattern pins and we have some new patterns. So in the second session, which is about to start this weekend, will include uh, everything you'll ever want to know about pattern pins and how to make these. And I even do a demo of all this. And, and as you can see, this is, you know, this is kind of fun. It's a, um, it's an interesting way of working and it's a way that I think illustrators would like to work. And, you know, uh, it's just, it's just kind of fun, I guess. Okay. That's enough of this. Let's um, get rid of this image real quick. And um, let's see. All right, I'm going to get rid of layer two. And I still have that set up. I'm going to go back to runny watercolor and I'm going to get a brush called Skip's Grainy Bristle Wet. And also, I give people all these brushes and stuff that I work with in the class. But ultimately, I put them all on my website for free anyway. So you can get them. <laughs> now, I'm going to open up uh, my mixer panel, I mean, my uh, color set panel. And I am going to put it over here on the right side. And I have everything set up on my radial menu. And the way it works is I have file with an M after it means that there's more menu items behind this one. So file, edit, layers, brushes, selections. See, file, edit, layers, brushes, selections. It takes all of this stuff and puts it here on my radial menu so that I don't have to keep going up here and finding stuff. So I just bring up the right room menu. I'm going to go to window, panels, and then my color stuff. And I want to open up color sets. Okay. So then the color sets open up over here. And I'm going to make it bigger. I usually don't work this uh, 
big with these, but about, uh, you know, about that size, maybe. Let's bring it down some. Now, another thing I offer in the classes are my color sets. And the one I'm going to use most today is Henri Roche uh, color set. That is a pastel company, and I went to their website, and they have examples of all their colors. And so I just, uh, you know, made a color set from their colors. And it's it's fairly big. You know, it goes on down here. I also have Windsor Newton. I have uh, Terry Ludwig. And this set up here is the traditional Japanese colors um, that are like thousands of years old. Okay, so I've got my Skips Grainy Bristle. I'm going to go up here and pause diffusion. A lot of things about watercolor, um, about working with watercolor has to do with when you pause diffusion, when you let it go, and all that kind of stuff. And I am going to start making a... Uh, sky, so to speak. And I know this looks real messy and stuff, but the thing is, once I let the diffusion go, all this is going to kind of run together. <laughs> so it's going to be fine. Um, and I want to add, um, I'm going to add a little purple in here. Because I just, why? I don't know. Because I think purple is sort of fun. And the reason I'm doing the sky all over is because if I decide to have water at the bottom, then I've got the sky reflected. If I don't uh, and it gets covered up, it doesn't matter. And I want to add a little warmth up here. And this particular brush, it will go very uh, light when it is finished. Put a little pink in there. Now I'm going to bring it back down to its regular size because I can control it a little better. And I want to add some gray in here. Just so that I've got some different kind of color going. Now one thing about pause diffusion, as long as you stay in the same library and you stay with runny watercolors, you can keep changing your brushes. So I'm going to switch to Thick and Thin 12 and I'm going to take, um, actually I'm going to leave the same gray and I'm just going to put in a couple of little lines like that. And the same thing down here. And now I'm going to get a dark blue and I'll just put a little dark blue in there. Oops, wrong place. And I'm going to go back to Skip's grainy bristle and put a little of that blue in with it here. Okay. Now if I pause, uh, release the pause diffusion, this line is going to run the same way Skip's grainy bristle runs. If I have thick, th thick and thin 12 open, then this all of this would hardly run at all because thick and thin 12 is not a runny brush. So that's what you want to do. You can you can bring in linear quality that I couldn't have brought in with Skip's grainy bristle and still get it to run. Watch. All right, so now it's beginning to diffuse, and uh, the whole thing is going to get much lighter, and my lines are going to look like they're running down the page. And I don't worry so much about, um, you know, the, the color that I put in. And any place where I have a little opening area where I miss something, I'm going to get that little line that you get in watercolor that's around it. And... Like I said, the whole thing is going to get much softer than what it is now. This brush brings in granulation so that you're going to see this granulation that, you know, that we love in watercolor. All right. Now, if I want, I can go back over this and add some more color to it. So let's say that I want to put a little more color in. Let's say that I just want to bring in a little bit more of this uh, color here. Now, 
What I didn't do was pause diffusion, which I should have. So see, it's going to run now the minute I stop, and I didn't want that to happen. So I'll undo, and then click pause diffusion. And I love making mistakes while I'm on camera because then you learn how to fix it. <laughs> um, and, we have a question that is wondering: Do you typically use color sets instead of the color wheel or the mixer? Uh, I use all three. Today, I've been using this color set. I'm not really sure why. With uh, thick paint, I, I, I like to use the mixer because it allows you to pick up uh, sample multiple colors. And I have a lot of watercolor brushes that allow you to do that as well. Uh, so it, it kind of depends on what I'm trying to accomplish but I actually use all of them. If you're hearing that squeaking, that's because in Mississippi, I have a kind of a makeshift setup and everything is on a cardboard table. And if I don't keep my hand up, the table is gonna squeak. So I'll try and watch I'm that. I'm not hearing squeaking, Skip. Let's say that again. I don't hear any squeaking. Oh, well, now? No. Oh, well, good. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to close that and let it go. And we've got a little more color in there. Okay, so now what we're going to do is now my, my watercolor layer got up above my regular layer. So I'm going to dr drag it down and put it under my paper layer, I should say. So now see, you're, you're seeing more of the texture of the paper once I brought it down below. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch to a, um, we're gonna switch to pattern pen mask. I wanna hit the reset button to make sure that it's reset and we're not using any strokes up here. And I'm going to pick this uh, pattern here, which is called thick paint because it was made with thick paint. And I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger. And I'm trying to decide where I want it. And I think I'm going to bring it down low to start. Well, you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm going to start a landscape with this brush. Okay, now I have a landscape. Okay, so the next thing we do, this is on a new layer, and the next thing that I usually do is I will go to the layer and right-click it and then select layer content. Okay, now I've got my, my landscape selected. I go up to select, and I save selection, and I'll call it landscape one because I may do another selection with more stuff on it. But right now, this is landscape one. Now, why am I doing that? I'm doing that so that when I come back and paint with other layer masks uh, on another layer or on the same layer, I can confine the painting just to this area, not up into uh, another, uh, you know, up 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 here in in the sky. Now, I'm going to come up to select and hide the marquee. Now, just to show you, see, normally I, I do that when I'm demonstrating, but normally I wouldn't. I would go selection, hide marquee, and rather than going up to the menu. All right, I wanna select a, I'm gonna select pattern pen transparent, and I'm gonna select um, a background, I mean, a, a, a pattern pen, call pastel a pattern called pastel and let's just put it up here at the top so you can see what it looks like well you're not going to be able to see what it looks like because i've got it on uh stroke attributes all right uh we're still not showing why oh ha! skippy <laughs> the reason you can't see it anybody know remember i have the selection going down here and so i can only paint in the selection i can't paint up here, 
All right, so if I bring it down here, there is the pattern with uh, using pattern pen transparent, which gives you a sort of transparent look uh, to the image. Now, if I go to pattern pen mask and put it across, you see it's opaque, but that's what the pattern actually looks like. And I am going to leave it with pattern pen mask, but I'm going to use my stroke attributes and I think I'm going to try screen. I'm going to make the brush a lot smaller. And, uh, yes, go ahead. In, in regards to what happened, um, Melissa was asking, how do you know you have it selected? And it's because you, and I do that as well. I turn the marching ants off. Right. Um, but is there any other indication that would let you know that you're working in a not, once you, Yeah, not, when you turn it off. Yeah, not really. Um, not that I know of. Yeah, not that I know of either. Yeah, it just it just does. And uh, what I'm trying to do now is find something that is going to lighten that mountain, but not exceptionally to there we go that all right so what i want to do here is i want to reduce the opacity some i've got it set to screen this is the pattern pen transparency and i've got the brush has got to be smaller so i can control it and while you're painting i just wanted mm -hmm. to let you know of course everybody is interested in your brushes and I don't know what you have up on your blog, but I copied Skip's link into the questions panel so that you can all go visit. And he's got tons of brushes there. I do. I don't have these there yet because they're sort of in the class. and uh, But they will get there eventually. Uh, so to class, everybody. <laughs> Say that really. <laughs> Take the glass? Is that what yeah. you said? Yeah, yeah. That, that would make a difference, that's for sure. All right, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to colorize. Yeah, look, see, now I'm getting this sort of uh, color back here, which is kind of fun. And all I'm doing right now is just adding stuff, you know, look at that. And sometimes that stuff is interesting. If I reset this brush now and I do the same pattern, look, that's what it looks like when you're not using um, Colorize, which is what I was using before. And I think I'm actually going to stay uh, with this without being Colorize and just... So it's like the beginning of maybe some trees or something there in the foreground. And so to go with along with those trees, I would probably go with snail. That's kind of green. I don't like that, though. Let's try this green. And what I want to do here is use stroke attributes again. And I'm going to try gel. That's making it too dark. So I uh, tell you what, we'll take the stroke opacity down. There we go. You see, you've got all of these controls at your fingertips. You just have to use them. Now, isn't that pretty? That's a pretty, pretty kind of color there. And this whole thing is just sort of zooming back. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so very neat <laughs> it's different I love it. yeah. all right so if i go to this gray background and i still work with pattern pin and um take it back to its default setting now that is going to give me this sort of gray dark look that that just gives me a little detail in the front now remember i'm not painting with anything but patterns right now <laughs> and uh, you know i think that's just sort of fun um let's go to this rich brown now i want to i want to take this one to uh the trans pattern pen transparent 
and let me just see what it looks like. Yeah, that's going to be fun, except that I need it to be not quite as transparent. See, it's transparent, so I keep some of that um, that yellow stuff, but it's in front, and it's just adding mess. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's just adding stuff. Now, now let's go to grainy, thick, and thin, uh, thick paint. And I'm going to come up to my papers and flow maps, and I want to get uh, paper. Now, I make papers all the time. Uh, and if you want to make papers, there I have a 13 video, um, uh, 13 videos on uh at at painter tanya help me what do you call it painter tutorials painter tutorials and you know what i can copy and paste that playlist link in the follow-up from go to webinar so that everybody okay. can find it all right so you know it, you really papers are the way to go because you can affect the way every brush paints with papers now i've just opened this i mean i've just created this paper or selected it, I've made it really big, 400. Now look, let me show you what it looks like at the default setting. I have a little script and I just hit the little script and it takes it back to the default setting. When you're looking at papers, you're looking at the top corner of the paper. When you're looking at flow maps, you're looking at the whole flow map, not just the corner, but paper, it's the top corner. So this is what this paper looks like uh, normally. It's this crazy kind of look. But what I did was I brought it up to 400 scale. Then I brought my contrast up so that it was basically black and white. And if you bring your brightness down, you'll even get a little bit more black and white. Now, once I've done that, when I take this, uh, the uh, grainy thick and thin brush, and I'm just going to do it down here to show you, and you start to paint with it. Why is it not showing? Uh, what color do I have selected at the moment? That might be the reason, but it shouldn't be. Okay, we've got an issue. Now, what we'll do is reset the brush. That's always your first go-to. This is, we don't have any of that set up. It is a thick paint layer. Um, we're going to go off of that. We'll do it again. You hmm. still have the selection Oh, on. yeah, the selection. Thank you. Um, and Gosh. Claire is the one that pointed this out. So thank you, Claire. Thank you very much. All right, so we go up to select and we'll select none or the way I would normally do it, I would go selection and then select none. Okay, so glad y'all found that. Thank you very much. All right, so when we paint with this now, you see all that texture that's happening? See, that brush is not gonna paint that way if you don't change your paper. It's gonna be kind of full. You know, it, it won't have any kind of texture. And I really want the texture. Now, I'm going to grab this color right here. And then I'm going to go to the color wheel. And I'm going to darken it. I want In the same family, but a lot darker. I want to take the brush and make it a little bit smaller. Like about that. And then I'm going to come in here. You know what, before I do that, I'm going to go back to this layer and I'm going to grab my eraser and I'm going to come in here and take out a little bit of this because I want to bring this river into play, but I need it to go somewhere. So it's going out there. Okay, now that we've done that, we come back up to the thick paint layer and we go back to the thick paint brush. We still have our selection. And I'm going to come in here and begin to 
put this darker color in. Also, I want to go up to canvas, surface lighting, and when I use thick paint, I take the shadow strength down to one. Uh, I just think it looks a lot better. And so we took that down, and I want to put in some of this. I just love the thick paint. Okay, and I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to let it kind of come out, see, and get that texture going. And it's going to come down this direction. And then up here, I'll just bring it in. Like that. I'll take it on out. Let it get. Let it have that texture that's going on. And I'm going to bring this over a little more. And then I'll start coming down this way, so that I have that river kind of defined. And sometimes after I do this, I will, um, you know, I may decide that I don't like all this stuff at the bottom. And so I'll just crop it off. Okay. But I think that's working pretty well so far. Now what I want to do is I want to bring in another color here. And I'm going to add another thick paint layer. Now, the reason I'm adding another thick paint layer is because if I'm going to bring in another color and I want it to have texture, then if I'm working on the same thick paint layer, I'm going to be messing up. It's going to be smearing what's already there. And what I want is a very dark blue. That's not dark enough. Um, it should be, but it wasn't. Actually, I think that's probably okay. I want it to be kind of like that. Not exactly, but in that range. I just want to bring some of that color down here. Yep. Yeah. Are you using an art pen or just... I am. Oh, okay, because I um, just had a question about how do you turn your brush in different directions. Right. So I don't art know if you to explain what that pen does. Right. An art pen uh, has barrel rotation so that when you have the brush, you can rotate the barrel just like you would a flat brush. And you can paint this way with it wide, or you can paint this way, so you're cutting in using the corner. And I use the barrel, um, I use the art pen exclusively, and I highly recommend them. Uh, for me, it's the only way to go. It does everything that a grip pen does, you know, if, you, if you're working with it, but it then has the extra stuff that a grip pen doesn't have. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm gonna... I think I'll just see if she um, posts anything else there. And just one other thing before I forget. I know that you're, uh, you've moved on, you're using thick paint. Um, but for those people that are new to the pattern pens, right? I think um, there might be a little confusion in whether or not. So the pattern pens are built to work with the patterns in the pattern library. So it's actually two components that are working together. Um, That's correct. So there was just a question about that. And honestly, I had a question I couldn't answer. And I don't know if you know the answer to this because we've had pattern pens for quite some time. Right. Um, they were wondering if you could actually import the pens into earlier versions of painter i realize you wouldn't have the merge modes and the extra capabilities that we added but i'm not certain if you might be able to bring the brushes into earlier versions well the brushes are in earlier versions well they are but then we added some new um, pattern pens in 2019 
So yes. I, haven't actually, I haven't tested to see if you can bring them into well, 2018. The ones that are in 2019, you probably could take to 2018, but not any earlier. And I would not recommend it. You know, I, I would say keep a brush that's made in 19, keep it in 19. Uh, brushes are forward compatible, but not backward. So uh, if you have a brush made in 2018, it will work in 2019, but a brush made in 2018 will not work in 2017. Right. And so it's, it's always looking forward with it. Um, but even though we have some new stuff, stroke attributes have been around for a while. I am not doing anything. Um, I haven't done anything so far that uh, you couldn't do in, I think, probably Painter 2012. But, uh, you know, you, the and I, I actually, I haven't used one of the new brushes yet. I, I should have, but I just didn't. What I would say is that... Um, it's always best to go forward and to go in and get the newer version because you're never you're never going wrong there and you have you do have new patterns and these new patterns are pattern masks some of them and some of them are not and and actually this uh, like uh, like this one right here this damaged wall let me show you what you can do with it. I mean, it is absolutely beautiful. Look at that tree. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I mean, that's a perfect tree. Do y'all see that or am I being Yeah, crazy? I do. I've never tried that before. <laughs> right. That is, um, that is a very useful way to use that. Right. And, and here, the moss, look at the fact that it's, See, it's a trans, it has a mask in it that all of the black area is going to be transparent. So you could put that in something like this and see it works perfectly in my landscape. Actually, that's quite nice right there. You see what I mean? There, mm -hmm. there, if you go, if you stay with new, if you keep going new things, you're always going to get more stuff, you know? Now, you have things like tree branches, and that is not a pattern mask. That's just a, a regular pattern. If you have a regular pattern, you just get this flow of the pattern, but it's not the mask like this where you get a line. That's the difference between making a pattern mask and making a uh, using pattern pins with mask as opposed to just the uh, a pattern that is made without a mask and it, there's a special way to make one with a mask and it's it's very easy to do now, actually i like this um uh, this moss a lot now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch to pattern chalk but i'm going to come down and get my pattern chalk which is called pattern chalk enhanced and the reason it's enhanced is that the pattern pins, because they're older, all of them are set to have the enhanced layer blending turned off, which means that you would get with these pattern chalk and pattern chalk jitter, the ones that use uh, patterns as opacity, I'm getting over your head, I'm sure, but those can use enhanced layer blending. And so you'd want to check that. What is the difference? Well, if you check enhanced layer blending and you, uh, let me first go over here and pick a color. Using pattern chalk or pattern chalk jitter, it doesn't pick the color from the pattern. It picks the color from uh, whatever color you have selected. So now you'll see that it is um, brown, okay? And uh, I've lost my train of thought what I was trying to tell you. Um, pat the, if you take the pattern chalk that 
doesn't have enhanced layer blending, then you see that white area on it and the fact that it's kind of solid, that goes away the minute you do enhanced layer blending and you get the complete pattern, so to speak. So if you're, you, <laughs> and this enhanced layer blending, the blending panel came in in what, 2017? Is that about right? Do you know, Tanya? Um, I don't know. I have to go back and, and look. Right. There, but I think that sounds about right. Okay. Well, anyway, I, I, I'm kind of talking in circles here about this because it's, it's difficult to explain all of this unless it's in a classroom situation where you can start at a certain place and lead up to it. Okay, what okay, I'm going to do. Since you mentioned the class, Nikki Jameson says, I highly recommend Skip's class. He goes into a lot of teaching detail on the different brushes, text, techniques, papers, and more. It's excellent. So that's a testimony to thank you. Uh, your class. And I want to be sure to let everybody know. because. Okay, thank you very excellent. much. All right, guys, I'm going to stop here because we're getting close to the end of the hour and I want to finish this up. And right now we've got a landscape, but it's kind of messy and it looks kind of weird. And, you know, the, the colors are all over the place, right? Well, if you were working with traditional, you know, you're, you're, you're screwed. You've got to go back and overlay all of this stuff. You might can do some glazing uh, over the top of it, but, Tradition, uh, digital gives us all, all kinds of ways of working. Now, I don't want to mess up my layers or what I have here. So what I'm going to do is come up to File and just click Clone. Now, just to show you again that, see, I wouldn't normally do it that way. I, I'm trying to get people to, to realize that working with your radio menu really is the way to go because you never have to move from in front of your painting. So I would just click clone here. Now, what that does is it brings up the exact replica of what we had, and it's all on a single layer, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is go over here and grab my interactive gradient tool. Now, the interactive gradient tool allows you to go to your gradients and pull a gradient over the top of your image. Now, I want to reset my gradient so it's at default, opacity is 100% and all of that. Then I want to go and look at the gradients. And there, there are a lot of great gradients in here. And I've made a bunch of gradients as well. These are all my gradients here. And I do give those out. Um, there's some more gradients. Well, that's David's gradients, David Gels. Um, and what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to look for a color, a gradient of some type. This one I call desert. I don't know if I'd like that or not. I'm looking for maybe an orange bisque. Now, bisque is real soft. Let's just see what bisque does. All right. So if I take this and pull it down over the top of the image, then the gradient comes up and that's what bisque is. It's kind of this pink in the center and um, beige and stuff on the side. You can move these little uh, dots here, the, 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 uh, I can't remember what they're called, swatches, I guess, uh, anywhere. You can, you can grab one and just move it. And when you move it, then, you know, the gradient itself will change. Uh, but in order to see it, you would have to take it off default. And if we go to gel, then that's what it looks like. Now, now you can see that the, the image itself has definitely changed from what it was before. And if you go through, look at colorize. That's reverse out. Each time you do this, you get a completely different, that's magic combined, which frequently gives me something I want to start with. It's like a new starting uh, point. 
that pseudo color, normal, dissolve, dissolve. What you do with the dissolve is you reduce the opacity. And when you reduce the opacity, it gives you these little dots that come out, which is uh, really kind of interesting. All right, so we go to multiply. Now I'm using my wheel to change between these merge modes or composite methods. You can't do that on a Mac, but you can on a PC. Um, so just to let yep. you know. Yes? There's also a little confusion over that radial menu, and I just wanted to clarify that that is only an option if you're using a Wacom tablet. That's correct. It is a Wacom thingy. Yeah. Um, and look at this hue, this all of a sudden this red monochrome. I mean, this becomes a totally different image. Um, so that's the beauty of this, but I don't particularly like um, uh, BISC. So all I have to do is click over here and I just grab another um, one of these. Let's see what yellow orange does. Oh. Now we're getting somewhere. See, th to me, this is uh, kind of exciting. It's kind of monochrome, but yet you still got the red. It's all pretty hot, you know. Uh, you still got red, you got dark, you got all of this. If I pull this down, see, it's going to get darker up here because this is the dark color. And if I pull this up, it's going to get brighter down here and you're going to get now we're getting a line right about in that spot and you, you can also move these lines in here to get what you want you can also edit the nodes that's what they're called you can edit the nodes and change their color which i'm not going to do and I'm trying to decide if I actually like this one or not. I think I'm going to look further. Um, let's see what um, Blossom. Hmm, Blossom's kind of fun. Let's bring this back up so that we bring the pink up higher. All right, so this one is getting it dark in the front, which is kind of the way it would work. You, you would get lighter going in the back. So you've got maybe some sun back there. And I, I sort of like these colors. What do you think, Tanya? Is this okay? I love it. Okay. Well, let's, let's go ahead and accept this one. We'll go click here, accept. All right. So now we've got a totally different painting that we had, but it still needs something. The problem is the contrast. It's, it doesn't have enough light and dark. And Painter has a great way to work with that. If you go up to Effects and Equalize, if you simply go Auto Set, you're going to get a huge difference. So I'm just going to go Auto Set. And look, see, now that brightened this up and gave it a little more pop. I can also change it myself though i this increasing this on this side will darken this stuff down here and increasing i mean going in this direction here will lighten the stuff up there and i kind of i actually like it where i'm almost losing light up here and i've got this darkness down here in the front um so you know, you, you can uh, say, okay, all right. So that's a quick painting, but all I have to do, oh shoot, sorry. All I have to do is minimize that. And I didn't want to minimize it actually, but that's all right. And now I'm going to go up to my radial menu, if I can find my uh, thing. And I'm going to go file clone again here i've got another clone i go up here and select the radiant radi uh, gradient tool 
And I come in here and I say, well, let's try, let's try storm. Let's make a storm. So we pull this down. Ooh, and we've got kind of a storm. I love doing this. I just, I get so excited about it, watching it. And let's bring this down. This needs to be darker down here. And greener. Yeah, and I see, I, I think that's real pretty too. Uh, I'm going to bring this down a little more, which is going to darken everything. Bring this down. Bring this back up so I don't get a line. Okay, I'm going to accept that one. And I'm going to go effects, equalize. And this one is going to surprise you. Ta-da! Look, isn't that neat? Mm-hmm. So, and not only that, you know, let's say okay on this one. But let's do something else. Let's go um, to windows, panels, underpainting, underpainting panels. There we go. And we're on here. We can start messing with the hue. Ooh. Hmm. <laughs> right. I don't know which way I want to go. This, yeah, this direction is where I want to go. The bluer and red combinations. Now that's kind of exciting. I can increase the saturation. Wow. I could increase, make the value brighter or darker. I'm going to go this brighter. This is such but not a quite good far. idea to use the underpainting panel, even when you're not photo painting. Right. It's it's a beautiful panel. And then yeah. we can increase the contrast. Look at all that. So we've got a whole new painting again, you know. And I'll tell you something else that's kind of fun. Take smart blur and blur it. Look at that. <laughs> See that little blurring that happens up in here and down here is kind of neat. That's a great tip. Yeah. Um, okay. So we uh, took the smart blur back off and we've got this. So let's accept this. And what the hey, does effects equalize do anything new now? Probably not. No, it's, it's not, it's done its thing because it did it auto set, but we could do it. See, we can still affect this. I think I want to make it brighter. There we go. See? And you have a whole nother ball game. Sign it, frame it, or print <laughs> it, frame it. <laughs> and think of how many I've just made, right? Um, and let's, let's go up here and I'll just open some of these things that I've made. Uh, let's go to recents. That would be the easiest way. And I'll just show you um, some varieties. Look at that one. <laughs> All right, you started to say something? Oh, yeah. I have two questions for you, and I think they're the only two that we haven't addressed and everything okay. answered. Um, okay. So, and I should have put the name down, but how did you download those color sets and get them into Painter? I didn't. I created them. Okay. Uh, so wh what I did was I went to the site, and if I remember correctly, I know with the uh, with the traditional Japanese colors, I've started making another one from Wikipedia. They have the uh, Pantone numbers and they have the RGB numbers. So all you would need to do is open up your color wheel. See, I would go to the color wheel and change these numbers to whatever the RG number would be. And once you have that number, you just go back to your um, color set and uh, 
you know, you, whatever color set you're in, you then just click add and it will add the current color on the color wheel to the color set. Now, after I did that, I also named it according to the numbers that uh, Henri Roche uh, used. So if you look here, you would find 3212. And if you go to their site, you would find this color that you could buy. Um, I did all this because I really enjoyed pastels for a while. Um, well, I still enjoy them. That's silly to say that. But um, I, I liked having all of the color sets um, that okay. were available. Great. And then you can also generate a color set from an image as well, just because Skip took you know, Absolutely. put time and energy into creating this in a very organized manner. <laughs> right. But you could open up a painting and just have it generate a color set for you. Right. We could we could generate a color set from this, mm -hmm. and and basically all you do is you come up to your uh, color set and you say new color set from image. Or you could make a selection in here and a new color set from selection, you know, all of that. And don't forget, too, that um, with your mixer pad, I, people forget this. Let me let me just do one little quick thing. I want to open up uh, a new document real quickly. All right. With thick paint and a lot of other kinds of brushes, any brush... If you, if you go to the general brush control panel, okay, any brush, this is the general brush control panel, and if you look at this dab type, and you have a whole list of them, any brush that has the word camel hair, flat, or bristle spray, thick paint, or artist oils in the name, will paint with multiple or sample multiple colors, okay? So if you come over here and you grab this sample multiple colors, and I'm going to make it up to 50 pixels, and I come in here and I grab that yellow and red and orange, then when I paint, I'm going to paint, uh, let me turn it sideways, I'm going to paint with yellow and orange, see? And that is a beautiful part of Painter, being able to do that. I've got a whole bunch of brushes that I call one-stroke brushes. And, and the purpose of them is to be able to do that, you know, so that you're, you're being like Donna Dewberry. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I okay. watch her videos. I love them. Huh? That I'm hear. glad I showed this to everybody, Skip. Yeah. Okay. Really and the last question. Yes. Um, somebody asked, why are some of the brushes in your custom palette, why do they display names while others have icons? Well, none of the brushes have icons. These icons are patterns. See, so you can put brushes, patterns, flow maps, and papers into your, your custom palette. You can put other things, too, like this is actually a custom palette, okay? And what's all in here, these are, are scripts. These are tools. Uh, these are commands, say variant, brush selector, commands that open up stuff. This brings in brush calibration. You know, this is the text tool and so forth. So you can put commands, brushes, patterns, weaves, all those kind of things into a custom palette. And then when you're in here, you just simply right click and you have the option of showing it in text view icon view, wide icon view, 
or you can make your own custom icon. So if I went to white icon view, now that's what that looks like. All right. So if I go back to text, it shows text because I can read it. I know what it is. I kind of know what it looks like. Now, if I go here, I can do the same thing. I can do text view and it tells the name of my pattern, thick paint. But I use it in icon view because I want to dis differentiate between the brush and a pattern or a paper or whatever. And to put a pattern or a paper in place, if I wanted to put this heavy pastel on here, I would simply hold down the shift key and grab it and drag it over here and let it go. And of course it didn't work. So let's do it again. It might be a go-to webinar thing. It too. probably is because it should have worked. Uh, and it's also possible that I'm doing something wrong over here. Hmm. Well, it's not working right now, but normally it does. <laughs> I've never had any trouble with that. So uh, it'll probably work the second that we shut the webinar down. <laughs> right. I also keep a lot of custom palettes um, because I wound up, you know, like capture dab demo pattern pins. This is pattern pins demo. In other words, these are the pins I'm using to demo uh, in the class. And then I will make this into a box file and give it to the class. Actually, that's all ready to do. It's going to open up. Uh, I think it's Sunday. Okay. Uh, so there we go. All right. Oh, we're over time. I didn't realize that. Sorry. We are, but you were so diligent about. I didn't even have to remind you to, <laughs> to finish. <laughs> We're right there, and you're over because of our questions. And I think it's important to get the questions answered. So thank you so much. Thank you. Now, now everybody is wondering, and I may have missed it, because when I'm multitasking, answering questions, sometimes I miss what you say. Um, but as far as the brushes that pick up multiple colors, did you say that you had a list of those? or? No, what I what I said was I gave the list by saying this. Um, you open up the general. Let me let me close that. All right. So you've got the general brush control panel, and the very first item there is dab type. If the dab type includes the name camel hair, see this one would be one. Here, except for liquid ink, liquid ink won't do it, but everything else does. Watercolor camel hair, that kind of brush, if it has the word camel hair, flat, bristle spray, those three items. And if it has artist oils or thick paint in the name, they will sample multiple colors. Okay, so you know what I'm gonna do? Um, we have a, a tips page for Painter and I will just turn that tidbit into a little tip. And, Great. Put it, and for everybody that's still asking, <laughs> the session has been recorded. Um, it has to process a little bit once this is done and then I'll just do a quick, I don't think we had any, um, any glitches in the webinar at all. So I should just be able to add a, an opening, a closing, and I'll pop it up on YouTube by the end of the day. Um, GoToWebinar does not send out the link to the, the actual recording until tomorrow at, at about one o'clock, the same time that the session started today. It's 24 hours later. So if you really wanna see it today, check there a little bit you know, early evening and it should be there for you. And we will, of course, follow up with the link tomorrow. And other than that, you're getting tons of praise and thanks, which you can't oh, because you don't have the, <laughs> the questions panel. But this was really wonderful, Skip. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it. It was lots of fun. Let's do it again. All right. That's a plan.
Um, okay, everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and close the session down. And you will hear from us shortly regarding the follow-up link. Have a great weekend, everybody. You too, Skip. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.